Hello and welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Marion. And I'm Corey Ballmeister. And we've got Rob on the booth. Say hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. Rob, we'll be taking all of your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games so he can see them and send his favorites over to us. We're playing some modern here on Versus Live. Oh, it's been and good. It's been fun. As is typical for us, we're wrapping our day with the, the fun decks of yeah. the group, the most fun decks, I would say. Yep. Corey's list is actually from a recent modern challenge, mm -hmm. made it into the, the top eight, and this is Grixis Delver, but not Grixis Delver like we used to see it four or five years ago or so. Yeah. Uh, this has uh, some new some new spice. Okay. Got okay. a little, little Thieves Guild Enforcer. Ooh. Uh, you know, a little Vantress Gargoyle, so there's some... Two mana, five, four flyers? Let's yeah. go. Just insanely good creatures on rate, but that all have some dramatic uh, drawbacks, but... Yeah. yeah. You know, well, in modern, people are putting cards in their graveyard pretty frequently. Frequently, yep. with cheap spells and fetch lands. And, yep. Uh, you know, you can help them out a little bit with the Thieves Guild Enforcer. That gets you two. Yep. Vantress Gargoyle, when it comes down, it can, you know, mill Here's a little bit milling, before yep. it starts attacking. And then you've Thought got Thought Scour. Scour. Yep. So, you, you know, you only need to help them a little bit. Three, four cards mm -hmm. should be plenty to get them to the seven that you need. And then suddenly you're playing eight one mana three power creatures. Yeah. You're playing a two mana five four flyer and you know you've got drown in the lock and into the story as he's really busted the card yeah, this deck seems and sweet. interaction spells. I'm not so. gonna lie. Yeah. And just the beautiful pretty delvers that we uh that we got given here, they're they're all foil. Ooh. Oh yeah. Couldn't yeah. find couldn't find it we have no copies of Delver of Secrets. Maybe they just wanted to really flash it out on us. Yeah. Really wanted to That was the worst one yet. Yeah. <laughs> the actual worst one. <laughs> really, really, truly bad. That wasn't even a pun. I was just mm -hmm. saying they're trying to get you're flashy with a, us. You're playing a flash deck. Well, then it was just embrained in my head. I was saying they're flashy because okay. they're pretty. No wonder it was bad. It was unintended. Yes. But I just <laughs> didn't give you any credit because I assume every bad pun that comes out of your mouth is entirely no, I haven't intentional. No, I haven't even purposely thrown a pun out there yet today. Give it time, though. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to be playing a, sort of a pet deck of mine. I haven't ever registered it in a, in a tournament, but I always think about this deck, and it's never that good. It's the Death and Taxes archetype. Yeah. You know, it's kind of finicky. Its creature's a little underpowered, but when the synergies get going, it does really powerful stuff. Yeah. And I've yep. built a lot of different versions of this deck over the years. I remember playing one with Mox Amber in it that was more aggressive, and I figured, like, yeah, we'll play, like, Kithian and Isamaru, and, you know, Thalia's already legendary, so that one's good, and I have, okay. like, two Brimaz or something, and so, so you, I would go, like, turn one, land, Isamaru, Mox, Kithian, and then next turn, go, like, lean and Arbiter, strip mine you with the Ghost Quarter, yeah. and suddenly I had six power in play, and they were strip mine, and, yeah. you know, it's, uh, once again, it's best draws are really good, Yeah, but it's, like, medium draws usually didn't matter. Really up. bad. You're playing two mana bears and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. No, it, it's a deck I've really liked as well, too, um, and uh, I've played against it a decent amount online in Modern. I think it's, like, people's favorite deck, yeah. like, a lot of people's really, really uh, favorite deck here. Th but. This is another version of it. We're a Luris Companion deck, so, and we're playing red, so you get to play some Seal of Fires. That's okay. not another issue with the deck. It doesn't handle good creatures effectively. You just have the four path, yeah, and you don't yeah. want to use those early, but you do need to use them early to get damage in. And unless you have the Arbiter, it doesn't really work that well. Mm -hmm. So getting some Seal Fires in your deck not only gives you some cheap removal, it also gives you some reach. We're also playing Selfless Savior from Core Set 21 to go along with Giver of Runes. It's a great protection for Luris. <laughs> so Luris should give this deck some more powerful endgame while still having that low curve and those disruptive draws. Yep. So uh, I like Luris in this deck a lot. It's also, with the new Companion rule, Look, companions work really well with Aether Vial. So you can just bring it in your hand and vial it into play immediately. Ooh, true, true, yeah. yeah. So in a Spicy. vial deck, it works really well. So then it actually gets to work the same, you know? Yeah. Free uh, nerfing. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, this deck is doing a lot, of, a lot of things I like. Hopefully it can power up the archetype a little bit. And it should be an interesting matchup here because I'm going to try to keep your mana off balance. Yep. That's always going to be tough for some Delver decks. But if you get ahead, you know, it, it can get off I've got more removal. Creatures. So I like the dynamics of this matchup Let's well. do it. Let's do it. Yeah, it should be a good one. And oh yeah, I just have some cards that are just nostalgic over here, so I, I'm in. And yeah, I will keep the scent. Okay. Um yeah, me as well. We'll start on Inspiring Vantage, Selfless Savior. Okay. Fast turn. All right. Let's see. What do we want to do? Um hmm. I think I can safely just take two and pass to you. 18. Okay, attack for one. Um, I'm gonna fl flash this in, mill two. 
I'm just going to block. Okay, they charge. All right. I will take two, go to 18 as well, and play Alina and Arbiter. Okay. That's the turn. Sounds good. All right. All right, let's go with the Gargoyle and pass to you. So it can't attack unless I have seven engraver, so it can block right now. Yep, yep. Unless you have four more cards. Yep. Yep. So it can block, and I can use it on the first turn, right? Maybe not. No. No, no, it's, no. Yeah, it's still a creature. Mind. What am I thinking? If it didn't become a creature, if it had a clause that said when you have seven or more cards in your graveyard becomes a creature, yeah. then you'd be able to use it. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, play another Arbiter. Okay. And let's blow up this water grave. Uh, I will not pay for it. And pass the turn. All right. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, I got an Inquisition. That is pretty good, so you're going to get my path. Okay, I'll take that. I had a really nice turn lined up next turn. I was going to feel the land, get a planes, path your thing. Yeah, yeah, this is still going to be pretty brutal here, so I'll pass to you. Oh. Um, so in, instead, I, th I think I want to get the Luris working. I don't know how many, like, you have a good number of fetch lands, and you're yep. off of blue, and I have multiple Arbiters. Um... So I think I want to get the Luris working over these next two turns. Okay. Pass. All right. We each put top card. All right. Can't attack quite yet. Ugh. Um, well. Hmm. Yeah, that uh, strip mine really got us good. Can just start trying to kill you here, but that also does not feel strong. Yeah, I think we're in a lot of trouble here. Um, your go. Okay, no land drop is interesting. So I'm going to take this opportunity to strip mine. So you don't have removal up for this Luris. Okay. So let's hit the Blood Crypt. All right, I'll float a black. Yep. Search. Uh, no. For Field of Ruin. It's players, not, so I can't either. Um, really? For some reason I thought I could, but you couldn't. But that's not true. This is players. Oh, uh, okay. Not, neither of us searches. Okay, okay. For some reason I thought Field didn't work the same way. No. Like, okay. All right. Well, then, yeah, I'm just in trouble. Um... But I Rob's just, just like, nope, not having that. <laughs> of course, this is, a, this is not symmetrical. That's why these decks don't play Fetch Lands. Yep, yep. Um, that's still awkward. But I still wanted to get the red mana out before the Luris came down, okay. so that's fine. And then I'll pass the turn. All right, I'll play this. You mill, then I'll mill you is again. It, is it each, it's each opponent. Each opponent, yep. Mill you one more time. I guess maybe I shouldn't be milling anymore. All right. Okay, that sounds great. I'll attack. I'll right, we'll definitely trade and take okay. five. I go to 13. Your go. Now we've just got to uh, put you away before anything too crazy happens. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, you may be like, you'd probably have be playing fetch lines out, so when you found removal, you could use them. So I don't think you have fetch lines. I think you just don't have lands. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just play this Luris. I okay. go to twelve and get in for two. All right. Oh, I shouldn't attack into a Thieves Gold Enforcer. Yeah. So just go to, go to twelve and pass. Okay. I did not have it. It's fine. Ooh, oh yes. <laughs> Sixteen. Um. All right. Let's drown in the lock, Luris. <laughs> Bang. I'm at seven. Your go. That was big. That was big. We needed that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Corey, when you activate Vantress Gargoyles, each player. It is each player? Yeah. Okay. Well, Should have milled over that watery grave. <laughs> I don't think I milled the other time either, though. So, yeah. Who knows how it would have affected you? Well, I'll mill one extra card. Sorry about that, chat. It's going to lose to this no, thing. No, I didn't. Yeah. Because you ripped, like, one of, like, three outs in your deck. You know, you think I only have uh, that many lands? You're probably right. I think you probably have two Water Grave, a Blood Crypt, a Steam Vents, and maybe one or two Islands. And then just a bunch of Sack Lands. So I think you have three. I think you have three or four outs. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um. Okay. Well, I will go to six and play these and attack. Okay. Okay. Fourteen. 
14 to 7? 14 to 6. 6, okay. You can go. All right. I'm at, he's a 14, I'm a 6. Okay, um, so I can't crack this unless I pay 2. Uh, doesn't seem like the best play. Anyways, I'll attack for 5. I'm a 1. All right, and I guess can't be 1, can't be 2, huh? Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I think I have no outs. 2 mana 5 fours. Oh, no, I have outs. Uh-oh. I have two Remorseful Clerics in my deck. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> okay. That's some big canyon. Okay, all right. That's the problem with these mm -hmm. decks. Like, I had them dead, and I just still didn't have any clock. Yeah. And, uh, you know, was very close. You know, one good draw was enough to undo all of the work I had done. For sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's kind of a house of cards, really. Like, you know, yeah. once you once you get one thing, your whole game plan kind of goes uh, exactly, by the way. Exactly side, right. So. All right. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to sideboard here with our third and final match here on Versus Live. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Versus Live, where we are sideboarding in our matchup between Luris, Boros, Taxes, and Grixis Delver. For my side, are getting longer every day. Yeah. <laughs> For my side, uh, we want extra removal as much as po we possibly can. So the Winds of Abandons come in. Okay. Morsel Cleric, a little bit of graveyard interaction will also help. Okay. Fraxmer Invoker has essentially no targets here. And then Sarah Avenger is a card that can sometimes, you know, play well in combat. It plays well with Vile. But mm -hmm. here, it doesn't match up well against your removal. It doesn't match up well against your creatures. Yeah. Uh, trades with either, any of them or just, you know, uh, doesn't even trade with Gargoyle. Yeah, that's not and great. And the flying isn't super relevant. So I think it's just a pretty weak creature in the matchup overall. How so. often do you think this card is brought in to hit your own graveyard? I think this might be a first. I think this might be a first as well. So that that is pretty uh, outrageous. Um, from my side here, taking out a lot of our blue counter spells, um, because if we just ever get stuck with them in hand, when you've already landed your threats, I am just completely done. So I just want to be much more proactive in my answers. So I'm bringing in Fatal Push, Spell Elsner actually seems awesome, so we're adding uh, another copy to our one, at least one already, uh, and then Bitter Blossom. Once it lands, it seems like a really uh, tough threat to uh, to beat, and I've just wanted to cast Bitter Blossom for so long, <laughs> but it's just been so bad, you know? <laughs> and we even got Fairy Rogues. Ari got to be the fairy, huh? Yep. Nice. I would love to have a Fairy that's Rogue. That's an old SCG token. Is yeah. there a date on that? 2014. Wow. That's a nice one. I like that that material. All right, Rob, do you got any questions for us while we shuffle up for our last round? Uh, is it worth dumping Loros in the Boros deck for the Stoneforge uh, Mystic package? Potentially. This deck is certainly built a lot with Loris in mind, yep. and I like how powerful Loris is with the Vile. Mm. Stoneforge Mystic is also good. You know, there's two yep. ways to go. Just depending on which which avenue you want to yeah. go. Yeah. I, I like that Luris gives you access to that recurring removal with Seal Fire. And yeah. That kind of stuff is super relevant for this deck. And you've got to clear away, you know, Burns creatures or clear away uh, Ice Fang Colottles and stuff like that without but, blowing your paths. But think about it. After uh, Monday's ban announcement, you don't have to choose between one or either. You get to play Stoneforge and Jite. <laughs> and keep Luris. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> All right, Ross, bring it on. You are on the play. Let's see what we got. I will keep my hand. I'll keep as well. Pass the turn. Um, land go. Smuggler's Copter, huh? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, pass. Uh, I was getting right. spell snared. <laughs> nope. I'm going to probably take three here. Which land do we want to get? Is this a Devil or Thieves Guild Enforcer? Oh, it's a Thieves Guild Enforcer. You know it. Helping out your Lura stack, probably not the best, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll play this. Untap. I got another land, and I'll attack. <coughs> Bless you. Uh, yeah, I'll go to 19. 19, okay. And then I'll pass to you. Okay. Let's uh, play a Remorseful Cleric. Okay. Crew the Copter. Sure. Beginning of combat. I'm going to bolt it. Um, 
which land we want to get probably blue red take two take three more go so to 14. 14 yep holding the copter yep okay second main i will go to 19 and play seal fire okay that's the turn you said go to 19 right or 18 because i attacked yeah yeah okay so 18 to 14. Um, and then end step, we're going to play another Enforcer. All right, so five cards. We need eight, right? Seven, I think. Eight or more. Eight? Oh, that one's eight. That is weird. Most of, uh, most of yeah. everything has been uh, seven threshold, stuff like that. Um, that's a little dangerous. That was a very dangerous draw on my part. Um, you need to build two, two more Ross because they each trigger each other. What's mm -hmm. up? Oh, yeah, they trigger off of other rogues. Oh, okay. Well, that changes it. Now I have seven total. Okay, okay. Well, that changes my play. Sorry, this is uh, not the most common of cards that we've played against. I yeah. think we can safely say that one. I'm going to Thought Scour you. And I'll attack for six. Okay. I'll go to 15. I'll play a land and pass to you. Attack for two. I uh, will go to 12. I will play a smuggler's copter. Um. Yeah, that's fine. I will go to 14 and play Sarah Venture. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. End step, bolt that. And I will crack this, go to 11. Um, let's get a blue black. You have three in hand? I believe I have four. Oh, just three. About to have four. Uh, attack for three. Eleven all. All right. Uh, it's just so risky. What do I want to do? Land tapped. And I guess this is probably a better play, anyways. Um, destroy discard. <laughs> All righty, here go. Yep. Back for two. Okay. Nine. You can go. It's a race. That was a good one. I'm at eight. Uh, Gargoyle. Sure. Your go. Uh, on your end step, path the Gargoyle. I'll go to seven. That was pretty good. Um, all right. I will search. Seven to nine, huh? Yep. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's a drown over there. So I don't want to run the Luris into it. So I'm going to play Thalia. Thalia. Um, you can't let it resolve and then drown. You've got to drown it on the stack. Yep. Um, well, he does still check the Enforcer, which is a 3-2. That is true. Yeah, that's a that's a rough one. All right, you got me. Now, with me at 7, I think it probably is worthwhile to just hang back. Okay. I'll attack. I will block. Okay. Your go. It's a risky bitter blossom, but certainly is. Uh, so I'll play this, Kay. and then we'll play seal fire. I'll All go right. to six and seal that. Sure. And pass the turn. All right. So you're at eight. Yep. It's probably not going to work out well for me. Unless I draw a bolt for Luris. <laughs> Get out of here. Your go. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Definitely not over by any means. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> My deck's 50% bolts, I feel. That's the third one you played. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I That's okay. the third one, if my, my count's correct. <laughs> Bolted copter early, yeah. But I got other bolt-like effects. Well, push wouldn't have done it. <laughs> That's true. That, <laughs> yeah, you can go. All right, I'll lose another one, go to seven. Yeah. I think I'm still behind here. Oh, God. The, the giver is nice. It lets me actually just attack their Bitter Blossom. Yeah. Can put you to six. Well, I, I am at six. Oh, you are at six? Yeah, I don't. So I can put you to five by five. attacking. Is, is that what you had, Rob? Six to seven? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can attack me down to five. Hmm. Oh, what a what an awkward draw. You're actually winning this race by exactly a point on both sides right now. Yeah. But if I draw anything on my turn... How does the math work with this one? <laughs> uh, I don't think... That, that does not help. I don't think it does. No. Yeah. That, that's very, very bad. You should not win. Because <laughs> it literally... You lose two life before you get any damage. Yeah. All right. I'll attack. <laughs> yes. Your go. Five. But the first one was awkward when I drew it, and the second one did not get any better. Very good draw. Yeah. Pro black. Get in. Okay. Five. Five all. You can go. Upkeep, you go to four. Four. All right, we need a good one. How about a lightning bolt, number four? Okay. Okay. Right, a removal spell is still good for you. Oh, this is... I guess we don't have... Yeah, we only, have, That's we only have two R's. Uh, I'll attack for two. I go to three. You are go. And I guess... Uh, oh, I know, I know what to do. Oh, even better. Um, Winds of Abandon the Untapped Fairy. I search for a land or something, right? Yeah, it's it's Path Exile. All right. It's a two mana sorcery seed path. Oh, mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. Pay Arbiter. Yeah. yeah. Arbiter is probably the card that I've just, like, either sacked something the most without paying for it and just running into stuff. And you're at four? Yep. So, I th so if you have Thieves Guild Enforcer, um, then attacking like this forces you to trade it, and that's fine. I just put you to two, and then you, you, it lets you draw a bolt. Any, any, if it's a removal spell, then I can selfless savior. If it's the bounce, if it's like brazen bar, can I leave this up? No, because any Thieves Guild Enforcer and block here. But then I do have a blocker on the way back, but you can draw a removal. Uh, I'll send all three. All right, it is an enforcer. Mill. Okay, and yep, only one block. Block the um, arbiter. You've already paid the two for this, so yep. that doesn't do anything. Yeah, I will just let them trade, put you to two. Okay. You go to one. <laughs> Are you ready for it? You think it's I think it's Culligan's command. Oh, oh, we're cooking. Draw. Oh, that's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. Dang it. <laughs> that was a close one. Yeah, this is nothing but close games. If you remember the, the first Invitational that we held in Roanoke, was oh. won by Brian Koval playing Mono White Death and Taxes. I watched that the finals from, uh, against uh, Daniel Fournier. Yeah, yeah, I watched over. that from home, but it was awesome. Yeah, there was yeah. like a threat. And at the end, last game, it was like Thraben Inspector sacked the clue, hit yeah. something else that put him just barely ahead. Yeah, yeah. I remember it was just an unbelievable match where yeah. it looked like it could have went either way at any at any moment. I just want to say, like, yeah, that was, that was like good to watch and everything, but I prefer the next invitational where Aaron Barrett just like only played I think <laughs> like 26 turns in like the, in the, the eight eight. Or whatever. yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that, that was unreal <laughs> just in fact right yeah, yeah. This is a weekend where, in fact, it was well positioned, and they're just the everybody's playing them. Ironworks and like yeah you know, yeah <laughs> just rolled through them. Oh yeah, hey, I've been uh, on the receiving end of uh, their aggro decks that I have no idea how to play against and stuff. <laughs> many a many a tournaments. <laughs> Uh, or, just, right. or just that Yawgmoth deck. Yeah, I mean, just basically every deck that uh, Aaron Barish plays, I lose to because I don't know how to play against it perfectly. It's always those tricky, aggressive decks, and they're just, yeah, they're, yeah. they're tough. 
and you know she knows the matchup way better than you do. Oh, for sure, for sure. (laughs) In fact, I had to read a a large percentage of the cards the last time she played uh, Yagamoth against me. It's it's always a weird spot to be in because you know that, like, you know, you, you when they do something weird, it's like, okay, they know something I don't know. Can yeah. I try to figure out what that thing I don't know might be? <laughs> and you, you end up really getting inside your own head. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. This hand is uh, pretty sweet. I have a very distinct game plan, I think. I will keep mine as well. Um, I will hope to draw a very specific card. <laughs> okay. Okay. God, I have so many options for what to start with. But I think it's just going to be take two, play Delbert. Your go. Okay. Blind flipping. I will play Ghost Quarter Ether File. Okay. Pass. Uh, I will attack. You didn't believe in the heart of the cards. Okay. I didn't. I sure didn't. I'm a 19 or at 18. All right. And then uh, I'm going to sack this. Going to go to 15 or 17? I think I have to go to 15 here. Maybe not. Keep in mind, I'm a four path, four ghost quarter, four field of ruin deck. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, and two wins of abandon. So f- f- fourteen search effects. God, that's... This, is a, this is a matchup where you really want to leave your basics in your deck. Yeah, but I'm also playing Bitter Blossom this turn. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then it's gonna be your turn. I'm at fifteen. Okay, pass the turn. All right. Upkeep. I'm going to lose one. I'm going to check my Delver. Bang. Bang, bang. Set a bang, 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 a bang. God, these Delvers are beautiful. Uh, Hold on. Okay. Still an upkeeper. Yeah, I'm going to pass it. Okay. Hey, you got a Laris anywhere there, bud? (laughs) <laughs> and I, yeah, I should just get it out now if you're going to be searching. All right. What do I want to get so here? I'm at 18. Okay. So you're at 18. I'm at 14. All right. And I'm going to draw for the turn. All right, I'll start with an Inquisition. I will activate Vial in response. Okay. Put in a Giver. Okay. I drew the Arbiter I wanted to, but you got the Inquisition for it. Yeah, yeah. I definitely think that's the card I got to take. So let's take that. And yeah, I think we'll just bolt this. Your go. Bitter Blossom and two removal spells for my things is not what I wanted to play against. Yeah, that's what I figured. I really want a Bitter Blossom on the play. But uh, I will put the Luris into my hand. Yep. Take one for that. Go to 17. Okay. You can go. All right. So I am going to lose one. 1713. Draw. We'll get that Luris out of your hand. <laughs> Get that Laris out of there. Uh, and then I'll attack for one. 16. And I guess we should probably do this now. Thought Scour you. Draw one. And pass to you. Okay. Hope that that's a white mana. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Pass turn. All right. Uh, another, I'm just going to go with these for the tokens. Go to 12. Uh, attack for two. 14. All right. This is the fairy game that I know and love where none of them ever die. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're very far away from wins. And you have one, two, three. How many cards in graveyard? Seven. Seven, okay. Um, Tough what to go for here. I'm gonna, ah, feels bad. 
That feels bad, I tell you. All right. Uh, I'm just going to play Delver. Pass to you. Uh, Insta activate. Yep. Okay. Nice drown on the lock. Huh? Nice drown on the lock. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Could not be drawn more awkwardly. <laughs> All right, I'll bolt up. <laughs> There's drown in the lock, he says. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Put that in the graveyard. No. Oh, yeah, I guess you might want to path it. I do. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay. Pass the turn. So you need six mana for the overload, right? Yep. Okay. Trigger. Oh, sorry. Get another token. Lose another life. Go to 11. Yep. Attack for four. 10. All right. I will play Snapcaster. Yep. Target Inquisition. All right, take your wins. Your go. I was like, oh, don't have Thalia again. <laughs> you can go. All right, I will go to 10. Get another token. This one cannot attack. Draw. I missed. <laughs> I'll attack. Okay. Sarah, huh? Uh, yeah, Snapcaster bolt it. <laughs> I'm just dead. Yeah, yeah. You want to pass some stuff? Yeah. Had a restock drew, here, too. Yeah, I drew four <laughs> paths, and you drew two snaps into the story, Bitter Blossom. Yeah, okay. yeah. Bitter Blossom, when you have all this spot removal, is probably not your uh, favorite thing to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a, a story of Bitter Blossom actually being good. What year is it? <laughs> that card, I feel, people have tried to cast against me, and it's just like, even a deck where I think I can't really beat the swarm of, of tokens, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, it's, it's not that big of a deal anymore, like it used to be, you know? Yeah, there's yeah. just no, you know, you know, it's just not as fast of a clock as it was in Lorwyn block constructed. Exactly. That's right. pretty much what standard was at that point. Lorwyn was the... Well, that's, that's where fairies were dominant. It was yeah. good in standard. It was never like ab absurdly good in standard. Yeah. Yeah, I guess like green black elves kept it at yeah, bay pretty the, hard. Yeah. And yeah, There were yeah. other things. The Merfolk deck was okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was, there was Revelark. And yeah, yep. that was my first pro tour. So that one, that, that metagame uh, hits home, you know? Yeah, pro tour Hollywood. Oh, yep. Yeah. Hollywood. That was not that one. Where you I, I didn't nice. play. Uh, my friend of mine qualified for it. One yeah. of back home and I I was at school, went about 45 minutes away. Nice. And in the, it was the weekend after my semester ended. So I just stayed on campus for a few extra few days, met him out in Hollywood. Nice. I, Brad came too, and then he was just at the railing like, ah, I want to I play. <laughs> then he came on to be a titan. So. <laughs> I, top, I top aided one of the PTQs that weekend playing Elementals. Just hadn't Ooh. played Magic in like six weeks. Just told them to send me a deck. And I'll, I'll play it, and it was like the Elementals deck in yep. Doc, and I played it. It was super fun. It was like crushing people. Love it. Just two. I had Horde of Notions in my deck. I was just beating people with. I remember that deck. Yeah, a lot of Vivid Land uh, shenanigans. Oh, yeah. But all right, so that was modern here. It felt good to be able to play an older format again. We we haven't done it in a while because standard. You know, a lot of events have been uh, uh, focused around that format lately. So we definitely wanted to bring a lot of standard content. But it did feel good to uh, switch back to my favorite format right now, for sure. I love Modern. Yeah, no, it yeah. worked out really well. In that matchup, you just saw the efficiency of Corey's removal. Like, yeah. It just matched up so well against my creatures. I was never really able to get ahead. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, I my maybe I'm not supposed to be that removal heavy, but... You know, you really you have two bitter blossoms, one end of the story, and yeah, you know, four four snaps, and so of those seven cards, you do four of them. Not and, bad. And of the and I drew like an average of two point five bolts a game, you know, so yeah. that, that helps. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, four bolts and three or four pushes probably post board. Yeah. You brought yeah. two in. I think you got a couple main. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And just having both access to both of those means that like my creatures just never live. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It, it was a tough. Uh, it seems like a tough matchup, but it was definitely interesting. Nice back yeah. and forth. And honestly, all of our matches were quite interesting back and forth uh, uh, matches. Where that's just that's just modern though. Right now, I feel too. You know, like everything has great interaction, so the games are always going long. Feels like every minor decision point that you have like really matters. Matters, and I, I do love that aspect of yeah. it. Uh, yeah, Modern's taken a lot of flack over the years for being this like goldfishy format, and I think that's often been overblown. But now yeah. it like, could not be further from the truth. But I mean, yeah. there's time when it it was, you know. I mean, like before Mox Opal, Mox Opal made every Mox Opal Faithless looting. Those kind of broke. Those broke decks, you know, yeah. and that made it very goldfishy. Is it Phoenix did the same thing every game, you know? These yeah, insanely it's a powerful. Did interact a lot. Like, you could play long games of that deck. Yeah, or you could also just go three Arc Light Phoenixes on turn two, GG, get sure. wrecked. Every deck's got some busted curves. It's modern. Yeah. You, got, you got to have something. You got to be able to do something busted yeah. to compete in modern because you got to have that high end to be able to, you know, trump other decks and good draws. But That's true. Yeah, That's true. You know, but Faithless Looting was definitely one of the more goldfishy cards. So since, oh, yeah. since that has been banned, and the format has been super interactive, yeah. You know, uh, and and then again, since Mox Opal, there's you know less Amulet Titan. Yeah, there, there's still some big mana around, but not a ton. And it's actually Eldrazi Tron is probably the most popular big mana deck right now. And I think that's great. I think that's it when big mana deck is it, when Matter Reshaper is playable in modern. I think we're at <laughs> a healthy point, like because <laughs> that yeah. card is so bad. We're seeing a little bit of Storm right now. Ooh, that's, a, that's a fine okay. one to have around. Okay, that can play some like long games through removal instead of just yeah. being a turn three deck. And so. like the Gruel mid-range decks, you know, when those are good, I feel like it's a really healthy format, yeah. you know, like, they're not directly targeting uh, specific decks, but their Blood Moon effects are pretty good across the board, you know, just really tough to deal with threats, and it's a, it's it ramps and stuff like that. I, I, I like playing against that deck with Ban. I think that's my favorite match to play, just because it, it's always close, Yeah, and uh, every decision matters, but yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I think Modern's generally good when there's an aggro deck like that. Like, yeah. rule of that, like they call it mid-range, it's basically an aggro deck. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I loved Modern a lot when Humans was big. Mm-hmm. I think having, you know, some sort of aggro deck where you can play fair but still play aggressively. Yeah. If the yeah. only fair option you have is something that's just hyper-reactive and answering all of your opponent's stuff, you know, that's a problem. Then it begins to just be a little too grindy. Yeah. 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 So yeah, we need something like that to balance things out. We do have that right now. Well, and- too bad. It doesn't matter. Modern's going to be flipped upside <laughs> yeah. down on Monday. So why are we even speculating? <laughs> but, hey, uh, I want to thank everybody so much for watching. Let's thank some subs, Rob. And we'll thank some sponsors, and we'll get out of here. All right. So we have three today. Ooh, Happy ooh. Gone 24 gave out a uh, community sub gift, so that's nice. cool. Nice. Uh, Guy Fieri Ball, subscribed for 17 months. Yes. And um, very uh, tying in with today's theme of a ban announcement is coming, uh, Unbanned Faithless Looting, subscribed for 18 months. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was, uh, that was their show to uh, get us <laughs> up in. So thank you, everybody, to those three subs. We appreciate the support here on the Star City Games Twitch channel. If you want to support Star City Games in another way and get yourself some pretty cool things, you can head over to starcitygames.com slash join dash premium. $7.99 will gain you exclusive content to uh, our writers or video content creators, 5% off sealed product, 10% off singles, and then 15% off any kind of supplies. So subscribe today. And that 15% does include the ultimate guard line of supplies that StarCityGames.com carries, including the katana sleeves that we use here on Versus Live. So if you are a fan of the ultimate guard line of products, be sure to look into premium because you'll basically just be getting that eight bucks back. Oh, man, so much value, so much value. And if you want more value and you also enjoy sitting, head over to Carnox.com slash SCG. You can use that promo code to get yourself 10% off one of these sweet Carnox shares. And last but not least, we are sponsored as well by Coalesce Apparel. If you like the shirts that we wear here on Versus Live, head on over to coalesceapparel.shop and use the gift code SCG when checking out to get 10% off of your purchase there. Get 10% off. Keep it 100. You know, just 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 keep it real. Yeah. We just need to get a, uh, a decimal point and a percent sign, and then we can just tie in with the graphic. Yeah, just keep it 10%. Keep it 10. <laughs> that is a way worse motto for a shirt, <laughs> I feel. But whatever. Whatever I'll, Ross I'll, says. I'll take one of my 
like keeping it 100 shirts and I'll just spray paint that on and okay. then we'll wear it and, and do the plug and no one will get it. Nice. So we get to smell your spray painted shirt for Versus Live. That sounds good, right, Rob? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So okay. let's go with okay. that. Rob approves. We're good. All right. Perfect. That's all we needed was Rob approval. Yeah. I'm going to spray paint I, it in this room too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, you that might want to talk to Cedric first. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You can't ruin these perfectly awesome shirts. Come on. Okay, one, they're my shirts now. They were given to me. Oh, good point, good point. <laughs> okay, that's true, that's true. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for Versus Live today. Thanks for tuning in for a special modern edition here. It felt good to uh, play with some old cards. Now, uh, as far as Thursday, now we got everything flipped upside down now that we got yeah. formats coming up down. So we got a spicy little idea that we're going to keep secret from you that we uh, might be doing on Thursday. And then next week, looks like we are going to have some exciting shows. Uh, so feel free to tune in into our more than likely really fun show Thursday. And then next week, we're going to be exploring the bands. We're going to be talking about them all week. So it's going to be uh, a really exciting week. Are you going to play Yu-Gi-Oh! on Thursday? <laughs> we might. Cribbage. We've talked about Cribbage Live. That could be fun as well. You know, all kinds of fun things. But um, one last thing before we go, the Star City Games standard qualifier number three is this weekend. And we got trials running all day today, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday, right? Fridays as well. Uh, just about every, if you want to play, you can play at any time. It's like every two hours these things uh, are, are firing. So if you want to join me and Ross in this qualifier, standard qualifier this weekend, I top aided last week with Mono Green Machine, as Cedric would call it. And you had a pretty deep run as well, right? Yeah, I had a good start to the event. Wills yeah. came off at the end with a little Racto Sacrifice, but mm. these are really cool tournaments. Um, you know, it's, it's fun to get out of the regionalism that the SCG tour engenders because of the fact that, you know, it's located where it has to be located. Yeah, yeah. Now we get a lot of the players that we watch on other circuits from across the world playing. Yeah. PV's in them, Autumn Burchette's in them, Yuki Chikawa's in them. So yeah. that's already three different continents. Yeah, <laughs> bang. I mean, I played in my seven-round tournament. Anybody who just loves playing against the best players like I do, I mean, you know, testing yourself at any opportunity, that's not only how you get better, but it's also just fun to see, you know, how you can match up. I I played Fabrizio, I played uh, Teruya Kakame, I played um, Ichikawa as well. Ichikawa as well. You know, I, I played some absolute sharks all weekend. So these tournaments are a blast. Uh, go to StarCityGames.com to figure out how to enter them uh, or MTG Melee to get some more information as well. So, all right, that is going to do it for Versus Live today. So for Corey, Ross, Rob, we'll see you Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Bye. Bye.